number one, whether it's a hobby or a coach, are you qualified? Are you degree qualified? Do you understand conditioning principles and how to apply those methods with different types of athletes in different contexts as well, whether it be the different sports from field sports to track and field to a intimate population in a rehab reconditioning in, um, situation compared to managing a large group. So that's critical. Are you qualified? Have you got your bachelor's? Of course, you can be a personal trainer and run an online business and call yourself a strength industry coach online. No one's stopping you from doing that. But in my opinion, to be qualified as a strength industry coach means that you want to work in pro sport and you want to work in whether that be club land or in a institution like the AIS, for example, the absolute base level would be a bachelor of sports science. More often than not nowadays, it's going to be a master's degree in human movement or sports science. Number two, are you invested in your own development? So are you participating in courses? Uh, are you attending workshops? Uh, are you learning from other peers that have been in the position that you want to be in the future or currently? Um, perhaps they've experienced your role for a number of years and you want to learn off them. And of course, early days while you're doing your degree, are you exposing yourself to the environment? So through placements and even in the off season, are you maximizing your time by hopefully shadowing into some programs to be able to see how they go about their work? And, and ultimately that can be some of the best development is speaking to other practitioners and learning about how they go about their craft. There's some of the ways that you can invest. Yes, that's going to cost money, but ultimately, like any craft or any skill set, if you're truly invested, you're going to need to have to spend money to realize your potential. And strength conditioning coaching is no different. Do you have the support networks? This more leans in towards mentors, colleagues. So, what's your environment like in early days? So, I started my sports science degree when I was 26. And then I started working at a semi pro uh, football club, Box Hill Hawks. So I had that environment that I could learn from and, and really be a, a fly on the wall to start with and then start to take on more responsibilities as I built trust and experience in that program. And then secondly, so I was working in a private high school with their rugby and, and rowing environment. So there's other coaches um, that I could learn off and, and see how they went about their work and, and ask lots of questions. But if I didn't have that opportunity, then I would invest in a mentor and seek someone externally and pay them largely probably for one-on-one -on -one time for some guidance. You only know what you know, so you won't even be aware of how you can do better unless you get feedback. Uh, and that's where uh, asking lots of questions, uh, particularly when things are going well, why did you get that result? And equally when things don't go to plan, review and reflect on what you could have done differently. And then number four, do you have a plan? So I think a big difference between a personal trainer fitness trainer and a strength and conditioning coach is there's a deeper understanding of physiology, biomechanics, and ultimately we're striving towards adaptation and moving the needle of an athlete's performance. So whereas as a personal trainer, I know from experience, you're typically thinking of designing workouts. So does the workout flow in the environment that you're in? Like I've been a personal trainer at Fitness First Gym and you know at 5, 6 p.m. the squat rack is going to be really hard. If you're a strength conditioning coach in private setting and it's one-on-one, -on -one, you have access these days to force plates, force decks. And that's what I'm sort of getting at to here. If strength conditioning is a hobby for you, you can largely probably have a plan and wing your workouts. Whereas if your strength conditioning is a career for you, you're going to be really objective and clear and have clarity around what's the big picture and what's ultimately the best plan for that person that's in front of you. I do offer mentorship as well. We've got two spots available in the month of August. So if you listen to this and you don't have mentors or colleagues around you that are helping you to improve, giving you feedback, and that's something you're interested in, you jump into my calendar by booking a link. There'll be a link in the show notes where you can jump on there and we can have a 15 minute discovery call around your goals, aspirations in your career and how to maximize your time to realize your potential. Jump in there, happy to jump on it and, and see if we could be a good fit. Like I said, I keep my, my coaching spots pretty limited. We've got two available and ultimately I work with coaches that either want to work in pro sport and that's their goal and helping them with their first full-time contract, or they want to develop their own prepare like a pro, so to speak, an online business. Uh, and I'm happy to work out with those two goals. So if that's something that either of those goals resonate with you and you'd like some help, book a call or email me and I'll happy to chat further.